Hello ladies and gentlemen, I'm the Fallout The Riser, and welcome back to my apocalypse. In today's video, we will be exploring all the vaults in Fallout 3, their original intentions, and their results. Before we start the video, we must first understand that there are different types of vaults in Fallout. The first type of vault in Fallout is called a Control Vault. Control Vault's purpose was to inhabit civilians and to carry on the human race during a nuclear apocalypse. The second type of vault is called an Experiment Vault. An Experiment Vault does exactly what you think it does. And to the new players of Fallout, I promise you, the majority of these aren't small experiments, such as seeing everyone's reaction when you replace their medications with sugar pills. Spoiler warning for anyone who has not completed the main quest line of Fallout 3 yet. Without further delay, let's get into the video. Vault 101, which is the starting vault in Fallout 3, is an experiment vault with its experiment being to never open the vault door. The point of the experiment was to see how society functions with isolation. This experiment went unbroken for many years until an expedition group left Vault 101 and headed to Megaton, which is where we find Moira in possession of the armored vault suit. The second time the vault was open was when the Lone Wanderer and James entered the vault seeking refuge from the wasteland. This was a controversial yet mutually beneficial situation between the Overseer and James, in where James and his child found shelter in Vault 101 and the vault gained an experienced and intelligent doctor. While the expedition team did not have any lasting impact on Vault 101's idea of the outside world, James entering and leaving the vault made some people want to leave the vault, and others harbored resentment for the lone wanderer and their father. Vault 101's fate, however, is not completely known because the decision is left up to the lone wanderer. Most likely what happens is that the Overseer steps down because he is eventually convinced that being isolated means there is only around 100 years maximum before Vault 101's genetic potential is over. I admit, in the 200 years since the war, our numbers have dwindled a little, but we have enough genetic diversity for a few more generations. My god, you're right. We won't last another 100 years whether or not we get supplies from the outside. We're the last bastion of pure humanity, and we're doomed. This results in a rare survival for an experiment vault's inhabitants. Moving on to Vault 106. Vault 106's experiment was far more cruel compared to Vault 101's. Vault 106's experiment was adding hallucinogenic and psychoactive gases to the air filtration system to induce a change in the behavior of the vault's inhabitants. Originally, the gas was only supposed to be pushed into the filtration system briefly, but something went wrong and much more gas was being released, and the vault residents quickly became hostile to researchers, guards, and the overseer. These psychoactive drugs are still being pumped through the vault's ventilation system to this day. So when the Lone Wanderer decides to explore Vault 106, they can see several people from their past, such as a group of female vault dwellers, the tunnel snakes, the overseer, and multiple instances of James at the same time. There's not much left to say about Vault 106 besides the fact that the remaining vault dwellers have gone insane and are now hostile to whoever is foolish enough to venture deep into the vault. Moving on to Vault 112. Vault 112 is located below Smith Case's garage and is one of the smallest vaults in the entirety of the Fallout series and the smallest vault in Fallout 3. Vault 112 was only supposed to house around 85 occupants and to suspend them indefinitely in what is known as Tranquility Loungers. These Tranquility Loungers have kept these vault dwellers alive for all these years by unknown means taking care of all their health requirements, from thirst and hunger to even aging. This is why Vault 112 lacks many basic rooms commonly found in other vaults, such as the cafeteria, living quarters, and common areas. The experiment of Vault 112 was to see the diagnostic reports from the Tranquility Loungers and how convinced the dwellers would be with the simulation. While the majority of the dwellers were completely unaware that they were in a simulation, there was one who was able to understand their situation and torment. In the simulation, this dweller is known as Old Lady Dithers, and she is very scared to be talking to the Lone Wanderer. If we inspect the terminal connected to her pod, we see unusual readings for her Tranquility Lounger. Just like with Vault 101, Vault 112's ending is completely up to the Lone Wanderer. Option 1 is to give Overseer Braun, who is disguised as Betty, some entertainment by killing the simulated Vault residents. Most enjoyable. Most enjoyable indeed. I haven't felt this exhilarated in years. Yes, yes. I shall miss your company. This has been a sim- The door is now open. Through it you may return to the real world, and whatever inferior existence you have there. Alternatively, 
Option two is to finally end the suffering of the Vault Dwellers and allow them to die after years of torture. To do this, you must find Bronze Terminal inside of the abandoned house and activate the Chinese invasion protocol. Do you realize what you've done? You've triggered the failsafe, ruined everything. The subjects will die and I You ruined everything, everything. I can't reset it, don't you see? The failsafe disabled the security protocols. They're all dead, for good. All my friends, gone. Now I'm stuck here by myself. In either situation, Vault 112 will most likely never affect the Wasteland ever again. Moving on to Vault 87. Vault 87's experiment was to test the forced evolutionary virus on the people who sought shelter in the vault. The overseers, the scientists, and the vault security guards were all aware of the dangers of these experiments, however, they decided to proceed. On one terminal, in the medical records file, it has a list of diseased vault dwellers. There are 93 deaths listed, 87 which are unexplained, which was a cover-up for the failed experimentations. For 200 years, super mutants have been bringing people of the Capital Wasteland back to Vault 87 and have only recently run out of their mysterious green goo. That is why there are several super mutant groups spread thin throughout DC. They are trying to find more of the FEV serum. And just like every other experimentation with super mutants and FEV, this left all of the dwellers inside of Vault 87 either dead or mutated into super mutants. There were instances of which the attempted mutations left the experimentees disfigured and difficult to describe besides the fact that they are more abominable than their more common and succeeded super mutants. I would be remiss if I failed to mention the one super mutant that is not like the rest. Fox is a possible good karma companion in Fallout 3 with interesting dialogue options. When we first find Fox, we see that he is locked in a room, of which he states he has been in for quite a while. Let me out of this place! I can't take it anymore! I can't even recall how long I've been here! Fox says that he has been taunted and even beaten by the other super mutants because of his lack of brutality. In exchange for his freedom, he says he will enter the highly irradiated room containing the Gek. The chamber in which the Gek resides is absolutely flooded with radiation! survive very long. Myself, on the other hand, have surprisingly inherited a useful trait from my fellow meta-humans. I am highly resistant to radiation. Let me out of here, and I will place the cat safely in your hands. Unfortunately, however, Fox still does show symptoms of the FEV mentally, with hyperaggression during fights and difficulty pronouncing large words at times. In conclusion, Vault 87 has heavily influenced the way the Capital Wasteland lives. Moving on to Vault 92. Vault 92's experiment was to add subliminal messages to the PA system to get the vault's residents to suggest aggression and combat. All of Vault 92's inhabitants were talented musicians and were told they were specifically selected to keep the musical talent of America alive. Many were excited by the idea and when engaged with their musical peers showed happiness. Later on, however, the effects of the subliminal messages began to take place and many of the dwellers began to change. Some dwellers were more hostile, some began showing some anxiety, and some simply went mad. Many of the vault residents began to understand the experiment and hear the subliminal messages. The keen ears of the more talented dwellers helped them understand that the vault was more than just protection from nuclear fire. The inhabitants began to pass around notes to stop the experiment and let other dwellers know if they did not know already. It is entirely unknown if anyone survived and managed to leave the vault because of the absurd amount of skeletons scattered around. But also, the vault door was left open upon the lone wanderer's arrival. Also. It had to have been a vault resident, inside or out, that opened it, because to open a vault door, you require a fit for it. Last, but certainly not least, now entering Vault 108. Vault 108, also known as the Gary Vault, is a vault consisting of Gary, 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 and more Garys. 
The experiment of Vault 108 was to see how far Vault Tech could take genetic engineering, specifically cloning. While they were successful with cloning a man, the first clone was identical to the last. 54 Gary clones were created in Vault 108, and they all turned hostile to whoever wasn't a clone, eventually taking over the entire vault, and a few leaving to add a little more Gary to the capital wasteland. The chief scientists of Vault 108 planned on terminating a few Gary clones to make room for more experiments, however, the clones broke free first. When the Gary clones broke free, they exterminated all life in the vault and eventually just started roaming around the vault aimlessly. There is only one instance when we can hear Gary have a reaction to a non-clone that isn't homicidal anger. Take a listen. Gary? Listen, son. I know we're real was rough. I'm sorry. I really am. Gary? Uh, Gary? Right. You can drop the act now. I'm not here to hurt you. Gary? <sighs> Look, just remove the pit bull and we can part ways. Gary! You know what? Fuck this. Hand me that saw. And turn off the recorder. So in the end, the Wasteland is just better off not interacting with the Garys. Before I end this video, I would like to say a big thank you to every single one of you that is subscribed right now. We have around 100 subscribers, and that is simply amazing. I didn't know how far I'd be able to get in this channel, and we've already gotten 100, and that's just, uh, just made me want to make more and do better. So, thank you everyone, and have a good day.